The able-bodied soldiers kept torturing the woman. They tried to force her to confess to being an agent. They even shoved a hose down her throat. They kept pouring gasoline into it. The woman did not confess despite this torture. Fortunately, after an appeal from a German biologist who admired her, the United States finally agreed to exchange the hostage for salt. Salt was freed and was impressed by the man who rescued her. Hater. So they were married. They thought they would live happily ever after. But it was the beginning of a nightmare. The day the police captured a Russian agent. Salt, as a police officer, interrogates him with her superiors. But the results of the interrogation surprised everyone. The old Russian agent, named Orlov, admitted that he led a secret secret service in the Soviet Union. The members were all minors. He brainwashed the children and sent them out to play their role in the future. And Orlov said that in the near future, one of his trained agents would assassinate the Russian president, who was coming to the United States. And the agent's name was Salt. The supervisors in the surveillance room were stunned. The polygraph machine skinned Orlov's story and found it to be true. But Salt's biggest concern was her husband Nader. Because Orlov found out she was married. And that would be an agent's Achilles heel. Sure enough, Nader's phone went unanswered. Salt followed protocol and stayed in the interrogation room. Two guards escorted Orlov out. But as soon as the elevator closed, Orlov immediately flies the blade from his shoe and escapes by easily knocking out the two guards. Salt knew Nader was in danger. She couldn't care less. So she took the opportunity to go to the bathroom and try to go home to Nader right away. Peabody, a colleague, saw her fleeing the headquarters building. He thinks it's a sign of her weakness. So he thinks she's really a Russian agent. So he immediately blocked all the exits and sent armed soldiers to round her up. But Salt already had a plan. She took off her black socks to block the surveillance head. Then she overturned the table and twisted off a leg. Salt poured two bottles of chemicals into the tub. One end is stuffed with a fused chemical. The other end is connected to a muzzle device. A simple rocket launcher is ready. As soon as the soldiers outside move in, Salt takes out the rocket launcher and fires it at them. She takes out the soldier's gun. Then she smashes the camera. Then she breaks the glass. Before the bosses can react, Salt has managed to escape. She returns home. Hader was gone. She knew that the only way to get Hader back was to complete the mission Orlov had arranged. But the Washington T team soon arrives at her door with guns blazing. They blew up the house and didn't find Salt. Peabody looked at the broken glass. He guessed that Salt had escaped from here. But he looked all around the building and saw no one. So she was hiding behind the air conditioner. When Peabody retreated into the room, Salt immediately climbed into a neighbor's house and escaped capture once again. But the street was full of cameras. Salt's whereabouts were exposed again. She was rounded up by a large group of police officers. Salt was trapped behind the wheel of a car. The police boss says he trusts her and wants her to come back with him. Salt says someone is trying to assassinate the Russian president. Those are the things they should be worried about. Next thing you know, Salt immediately jumps off the overpass. She manages to fall into a truck. But it also made Peabody lose all trust in her. They kept shooting at her. But Salt was able to dodge them. She jumped into another vehicle as soon as she could. Salt eventually managed to get away from the police. The vice president of the United States died in office. Dignitaries from around the world came to pay their respects. The president of Russia was among them. The service will be held at the cathedral. And Salt, who had dyed his hair black, entered the church. How to assassinate a president in full view of the public? For the average person, it's a lot harder than that. But for a trained operative, it's a matter of seconds. Saul threw a time bomb on the chandelier and flicked the switch. The roof was instantly cracked. And that's exactly where the Russian president was standing. Salt's assassination mission was completed. By the time Sheriff Peabody arrived, the Russian president was already in a pool of blood. Saul calmly dropped her gun and threw up her hands in surrender. She was then taken away by the armed team. Peabody was wondering why Saul didn't shoot him when she could have. But why didn't she shoot him? It turns out that Saul had planned all of this. Saul's simple kung fu moves left the cops defenseless. Once again, Saul escaped from the large number of police officers. Then Salt arrives at a dilapidated boat on the beach. The old Soviet secret agent who managed to escape is waiting for her. It turns out that Salt is really a Russian agent. 
She met not only Orlov, but also the agent she had trained with. She also met her kidnapped husband, Hader. It's true that Orlov suspected Saul's loyalty, so they grabbed Hader to blackmail Saul into working for them, but Saul misunderstood her former instructor. Orlov brutally drowned Hader in front of Saul in a water prison. Saul's heart was overwhelmed with grief and anger, but she still acted like she didn't care in front of these scumbags. After she found out Orlov's next plan, she immediately grabbed a glass bottle and beat Orlov to the punch. Next she had to do something even crazier. Salt is going to destroy all the agents here, because she knows how dangerous these people are to the country. Salt looks at the dead Nader and feels very guilty. She remembers their sweet times and sighs deeply, but there wasn't much time for her to grieve, because there were more important things for her to do. Then Saul contacted Orlov's next contact, an Eastern European colonel. Looking at the scars on the colonel's face, Saul remembered that he was her best friend Mike from the junior agent school. Mike still trusts Saul. He told Saul all about his plan. So Mike takes Saul, who has become an officer in disguise, to the White House for a diplomatic dinner. However, Saul's former boss found out about Saul's trail. He immediately arranged for the president to be evacuated. Salt asked Mike, what is your mission? Mike didn't answer, he just laughed. He then pushed Salt aside and shot the President of the United States directly. But the security was in place. He couldn't get close enough. In the end, Mike detonated the explosives he was carrying. But Salt knew Mike was just another pawn of Orlov's. There must be another purpose to this plan. The woman removes her fake ears and lifted the mask that was attached to her neck. Then she ripped off her entire face. The security personnel on the other side were so scared that they rushed to evacuate with the president. Just as the elevator door closes, Saul came after her. She wrenched the elevator door open. The elevator was descending. She didn't even think about it. She jumped to the elevator shaft. Then she jumped back and forth down the elevator shaft. But this not only consumes a lot of energy, her speed cannot catch up with the elevator. So she boldly stuck to the steel edge and slid down. Everyone thought she was here to kill the president. Only she knew she was coming to save him. But she was still a step too late. By the time she got past the layers of security and opened the electronic door, she found that all of the president's guards had been eliminated. The president had been knocked unconscious. The person sitting in front of the computer was Ted, her boss for many years. It turns out that Ted is also an agent of the secret organization. He calmly tells Saul that he was in the organization two years before she was. Saul pretended to be an agent and tried to get as close to Ted as possible. At this point Saul realizes that the purpose of the plan is to activate nuclear weapons and to start a war and that this launch would wipe out 9 million lives. But for Ted, it's just the feeling of accomplishment that comes from completing the mission. Saul was desperate. Saul is anxious and keeps asking Ted to let her join the program. Just as Ted was about to say yes, but then the news comes on TV that the Russian president Saul was responsible for assassinating us, not dead. He was just paralyzed by a spider venom that caused him to fake his death. Saul Tanator was a famous zoologist. He's especially knowledgeable about spiders. Ted knew Saul wasn't the same cold-hearted agent anymore. He was furious at the traitor to the organization. So he told Saul a secret. I'm the one who sent for your husband. Is he okay now? Saul couldn't take it anymore. She fired several shots at the glass. But the glass was not ordinary glass. No matter how hard she shot, she couldn't break the glass. So she immediately changed her target. She used the machine gun to break the hollow wall repeatedly and from the wall to find the electronic door power to force open the door. Ted panicked. The two of them then struggled with each other, but Ted was no match for Salt. He was quickly knocked to the ground by her. Just as the missile was about to be launched, she immediately pressed stop. And that's when the reinforcements arrived. They fired a direct shot at Salt. Luckily, she was wearing a bulletproof vest. And Ted turns into a loyalist in a second. He immediately says he's with the CIA and tells them to save the president first. On the one hand, there's a highly respected official. On the other side was a renegade agent. Without saying a word, the reinforcements escort Salt away and torture him. Ted doesn't stop there. He wants to kill Saul to save the day. But Saul saw through his little stunt. Just as they pass each other, Saul leaps into the air. She manages to kill Ted in full view of the heavies. 
the entire police force is stunned. To prevent Sop from escaping again, they arrange for a special helicopter escort. Peabody questions Salt. Why did you kill your boss? Ted. Salt says someone had to do it. But Peabody still couldn't believe that Ted was going to launch a missile while Salt was saving the world. He asks how many more people like Salt are out there. But Salt says there are many. Many more like Ted. That's when Peabody gets a text message. Salt's fingerprints are on the ship where Orlov was killed. He finally accepted the fact that Salt was a hero. So he secretly uncuffed Salt under FBI supervision. When the plane flew over Potomac River, Salt immediately opened the door and jumped right out. She would go on to destroy the secret agents who had compromised national security.